What's going on guys, Druzy here, back again with another South Park Foam Destroyer video, and we are returning to a series that was a huge favorite of you guys when I was first kind of doing different series here on the channel, and it was my best of series where I focused on the different cards from each theme for the same character class, and then I went ahead and talked about the pros and cons of each of those and rated by the one through four which of those that I felt was the best. Recently, one of the major characters got his fourth and final card in a theme, and that was Kyle. So we are going to be doing the best of Kyle video. This was something that a lot of you wanted when there was only three Kyle cards, but now that there is four, I felt that it was justified to finally do this series, as he finally got Bounty Hunter Kyle just about a week before posting and recording this video. So we're going to go through all the Kyle cards. We're going to talk about pros and cons of each of the four cards, and I will start with number the fourth best Kyle and work my way to the number one Kyle at the end of the video. As always, if you agree, disagree with any of the stuff that we're going to talk about and the rating system that I gave for these cards, please let me know in the comments section down below of the video. So we're going to quickly just go ahead and dive in to the Best of Kyle series. But the first card and the number four card in the breakdown is going to be Master Ninju. And I don't have Master Ninju as a card, so I will showcase his character art here on the screen for you guys. The pros and cons of Master Ninju and the reason why he is number four. The pros of him, he has the highest DPS of all the four Kyle cards currently within the game. He does have a buff that is going to be coming soon to him as his overall health will be increased in the next update that is coming out, I believe, in a couple days after I record this video. So that will be interesting to see if that health increase is going to be enough to push him up over the edge. But currently, right now, in my opinion, his health is so terrible that it, he, he really needed this health buff. He also needed a little bit of a damage buff, but that's just a personal preference. He does have the fastest attack speed, or is tied for the fastest attack speed of the four Kyle cards. One of the other Kyle cards is tied with him, that is Kyle of the Drow Elves. So they have the two fastest attack speeds of all the three, four Kyles that are currently out in the game. He does have a permanent Warcry buff. His, he does not have a charged ability, he has a Warcry ability, which does do a standalone buff that is permanent until the card, of course, dies, or the character dies. Not necessarily Kyle himself, but the actual character that he does buff. He doesn't buff himself. None of the Kyles buff themselves. They only buff the other ally cards on the battlefield. The cons of Master Ninja Kyle, in my opinion, he is more PvE focused than PvP focused. He can be used in PvP. He is considered a mid-tier card used by some PvP players. You're not going to see him probably in the higher echelon of PvP very much because of his rarity as a legendary rarity it is hard to get him. In fact, he's one of the only two legendary cards left that I still don't have. I've still yet to get Master Ninja and try him out for myself. Uh, I am intrigued to do so when I'm able to finally get him. He doesn't have the greatest health right now yet again we discussed that he will be getting a buff here coming up very soon but as of right now his health is terrible in retrospect to some of the other kyles as far as scaling goes uh, so we'll see if that health increase does again make him a little bit better here going forward and one of the other and last con for him is the fact that because he has a war cry versus a charged ability i think that puts him at a disadvantage because that war cry is only going to affect the units that are on the field at the time of the war Christ cast so then of course when the unit dies he then loses it and then he can't just continuously give that war cry buff of damage output over and over again throughout the course of his duration so those are the reasons why i think he is number four on the list of kyles so far coming in at number three is the newest kyle of the four kyles and that is bounty hunter kyle some of the pros of Bounty Hunter Kyle is he is a flying unit. He is the only Kyle that flies. All the rest are on the ground. That puts him at a nice advantage as far as his locking on. Most ranged unit cards will not focus on flying units first. They will focus on the nearest unit to them. So oftentimes you can distract a ranged unit from not even attacking Bounty Hunter Kyle which can be a nice little buff to you, but his flying ability definitely is a pro for him. He has an ability that is basically a based on hit scenario. So he is a flying unit, gives attack boost to all allies when he hits an enemy and heals all, al all allies when he kills an enemy. So he's not going to be killing a ton of enemies for a couple of cons that we'll be talking about here in a second, but he does do a good job of hitting the enemies generally for the most part, which will give them a solid, a decent attack boost every time he does hit an enemy. He's great at dealing with swarm units, things like that, and giving that buff to all of his allies, of course, on the field. 
He does, and his buff is permanent until he dies, of course, and then he no longer gives the buff, or the units die after the buff is given to them, so he will be giving out a standard buff that will then generate and build up over time as long as you're able to keep Bounty Hunter Kyle alive. Some of the major cons of Bounty Hunter Kyle is he is an epic rarity, and as of right now, I'm going to discount the fact that his availability within the game is the worst right now of the four Kyle cards and all the current ways you are able to acquire the card. So that is a disadvantage currently as of right now as I'm making this video, but I'm going to remove that into current consideration right now. But his epic rarity, it's going to be harder to get him leveled up and things like that. He's going to cost more to level up as well. So that's just a disadvantage in its own right. He is extremely squishy. I think he and believe he has the lowest health of all the Kyles currently as he is scaled up throughout the course of leveling him. So that is a big disadvantage for him uh, going forward. He is very easily counterable due to his squishiness and the lack of health that he currently possesses. Poison at a respectable level 3, a level 4, I believe Poison can take him out pretty quickly over a few seconds. So that is a huge disadvantage to him. He is going to be easily targeted as another con. Because he is a flying unit, most of the flying units in this game are going to be pretty much almost immediately focused on if you have a counter ability to counter him. Now, being a flying unit, again, it will be harder sometimes for the range units to target him if he is not in the front of the fold, which generally a flying unit you're not going to put up there up front to be targeted first. But uh, again, he's going to be easily countered and there are a variety of ways to counter him and most people will be smart enough to counter him very quickly. In my opinion, he is not as great at PvP as he is at PvE. He is a phenomenal PvE card. One of the better PvE range units in this entire game. He does have use in PvP and I think is not very widely used quite yet just because of his he's very difficult to obtain without purchasing a bunch and spending a ton of money in the game right now. It'll be interesting to see once he gets to be more available how many how often he's actually played and what his meta tier kind of is and the other con of of bounty hunter kyle is he is the lowest damage currently of all the kyles through his scaling he does not have great dps he's going to not do a ton of damage and not with a ton of survivability are some cons for him but his flying unit put him above master ninja kyle just that alone is a huge boost to him and his rarity is a little bit easier to going to be easier to obtain once it becomes more wide stream here in the near future so coming in at number two is going to be kyle of the drow elves so this one might be debated between kyle of the drow elves and bounty hunter kyle but i'm going to give you some reasons as to why kyle of the drow elves is a little bit better than bounty hunter kyle for kyle of the drow elves pros he is tied for the fastest attack speed again with Master Ninju right now within the game. So he's going to have a little bit faster attack speed and be able to do more DPS than Bounty Hunter Kyle was able to. He has an underrated charge ability in my opinion. His charge ability will... All the allies will gain invincibility for a 4 second duration. Which is the, lar which is the longest rated charge ability of the two Kyles that have charged abilities. So that is a pro for him is that he's going to have a longer lasting charge ability and the fact that all of the units that are on the field when he casts it are not going to be able to take damage at that time for at least four seconds also that invincibility will also cancel out any poison damage that could or could not be done to the units which is very underrated in my opinion as well so if someone casts out someone say alien queen red you're going to cancel any of the all poison damage that's done while they're under that four second invincibility or it will stop the poison ticks as well during the same duration as well so anytime you got any kind of ailment coming at you that is going to be done away with for a temporary period of time i believe at times in my opinion kyle of the drowves is generally not a character that most people will target right away as far as a range card there are some other range cards that are going to be pretty much immediate cancels i don't see a lot of people in all honesty dealing with kyle of the drowves right away i think that is a minor pro in his advantage now again he can be easily countered but I just don't think a lot of people just immediately say, oh man, Kyle of the Drowves is out here, I need to take him out immediately. Something you might do with Bounty Hunter Kyle, for instance, you might immediately drop a poison or something like that to deal with his flying unit. But with Kyle of the Drowves, at times, sometimes can just sit in the back and sometimes people will just ignore him and not really try to deal with him right away. He is a rare card that is kind of an advantage to him, so he's going to be a little bit easier to level up. You can request him from your clan through clan donations, things like that. So he's going to be, it's going to take longer to level him up that way through donations, but he is still a little bit easier to obtain, things like that. So that, I believe, is a pro for him. 
and he has the second best overall DPS of all the Kyles currently right now within the game. That is another pro in my opinion. Some of the cons of Kyle the Drow Elves is he does not have the greatest scaling in health and damage as he levels up. That is something that you will see uh, more so with a common card. Some rares do have really good scaling, but Kyle the Drow Elves has kind of lower scaling for some of the rare cards so far within the game. He has okay DPS for a range unit. He's about mid-tier DPS for a range unit. There are a lot of range units, even within his own theme, that have better overall DPS than Kyle the Drought Elves does. That is a disadvantage for him. Uh, also, again, because of his theme being fantasy, there are a lot more fantasy theme cards that generally people will focus on leveling overall. A lot, there is a lot more use for someone like maybe Robin Tweak, who has a range card within the same theme. Uh, someone like Catapult Timmy, who has a range card within the same theme. Even Dark Mage Craig can be focused on, and some people focus on him more than Kyle the Drought Elves. So Kyle the Drought Elves generally won't be a major focus of a lot of people within the fantasy theme because there are a lot of solid fantasy theme cards. And in my opinion, almost all ranged cards, except maybe the Amazingly Randy, are stronger than Kyle the Drought Elves currently. So those are mostly the cons of Kyle the Drought Elves. Not a ton in, re in retrospect to some of the other ones that we talked about, so that's why I put them at number two. And last but not least, number one, the best Kyle card currently within the game of the four Kyles is Gunslinger Kyle from the Adventure theme and one of them there are a lot of reasons in in my opinion as to why he is number one the biggest one is he is the lowest cost of all the kyles all the other kyles cost four energy to cast he only costs three that can be a big advantage because you're going to see him more times often in a fight than you might see one of the other ones he has a great charge ability which will boost all allies and the leader will get a bonus to attack damage for a three second duration. That will scale, of course, as he levels up, which can do a significant amount of damage. As you see at level 5, 46 and 55, mine does 103 attack boost damage. Again, that goes to the leader and all ally units on the field, which is very, very nice. He is a common rarity, so he's going to be the easiest to level up. He's going to be the lowest cost to level up, things like that. That is a huge pro for Gunslinger Kyle. And in reality, there are a, some good adventure range cards, but Gunslinger Kyle, I think, is one that a lot of people focus on, especially early on, because he's a card that you pretty much get right away when the game starts. So a lot of people will focus on leveling him up early, and if you continue to level him up at times, I think that will really do well for you overall. He has really good scaling as a common card. Most common cards have some of the better scaling out of all the cards as they level up and progress throughout the course of the game. So his health and damage will scale fairly well. Not amazingly, but will scale fairly well as a common card as he goes along. Some of the cons of Gunslinger Kyle are he has the shortest charge duration of the two Kyles that do have a charge ability. So Kyle of the Drought Elves will, his charge will last one second longer than the charge ability of Gunslinger Kyle. They both have the same length of time to cast the charge ability, which is 10 seconds between casts. So that is also, so that is not something where you can say, oh, well, his may last less time, but will it be faster to get it back, which is not the case in the two charge Kyles. He is at times targeted a decent amount and can be countered if fairly easily compared to some of the other uh, ranged units. So sometimes you will see more people starting to counter him more and more, especially because of his attack boost. Uh, versus someone like Kyle the Drowves. Again, I, f I feel like at times Kyle the Drowves is more ignored than Gunslinger Kyle is because he gives that attack boost to not only the allied units on the field, especially someone like Rats. A lot of people use, you know, swarm units, pair it with a Gunslinger Kyle, but he also gives that attack boost again to, the, to your allied new kid, which can be devastating at times, can stop a lot of pushes uh, if it's not countered or dealt with very quickly. He has the lowest DPS of all the Kyles and the lowest DPS out of all the range units currently within his theme outside of Outlaw Tweak. So, I mean, even Mess Woman Sharon has better DPS than Gunslinger Kyle. I mean, that's saying a lot, and I really don't like uh, Mess Woman Sharon in all honesty. So, I mean, that is a huge con for him is his damage output. And he has the slowest attack speed of all the Kyles currently. It's not a huge difference between the, the top two, only about four tenths of a second slower. But that could mean a lot in the grand scheme of things of maybe you may or may not get a kill by having that lower attack speed. So there we go, guys. There is my best of series for the Kyles currently within the game. Um, you know, this is something that you guys, again, really wanted to see earlier on within the channel when I was doing the best of series consistently, but I decided to wait until all four of the Kyles were released. So we are still waiting on the Ikes to get the mystical version of Ike, 
so we, we can do the Ike video. I also plan in probably possibly here in the near future updating my best of series because some of the best ofs I think are out of date compared to different tweaks and adjustments that have been made and balance changes that have been made to the cards as we've gone along within South Park Phone Destroyer. If there's any specific best ofs that you want me to see edited first, let me know down below. But I definitely feel like I need to update the Butters one for sure, as well as maybe a couple of other ones. I will go through them, double check, see what my ratings were, and see if I need to adjust them accordingly based on what I know now throughout the course of the game. Probably Stan will be edited as well. But again, let me know down below if there's any other ones you guys want to see, or if there's any specific content you would like to see here on the channel going forward. If you're not following many of my social media outlets, again, all that information is here to the side, as well as down in the description down below. We have finally hit 2,000 subs on the channel as i'm recording and uploading this video that is awesome thank you guys so much hopefully we continue to grow and grow as the channel goes forward and until next time guys my name is drewzy